Prologue. And that is how your father defeated the Troll King, my mom says, finishing her nightly bedtime story to me. She pulls up a warm blanket to my shoulders and kisses me on the forehead. Looking straight into my eyes, she pauses for a moment and then speaks softly. I love you, Asa, and I hope you know that and never forget it. Though my mom tells me she loves me every night before bed, tonight it feels a little different, like it's not merely routine. But rather than say anything back, I simply turn over in my bed away from her. You know, Mom, you don't have to tell me these stories anymore. I'm not a kid, you know. Besides, I've heard them all a hundred times each by now. Though I suppose my mom could have reacted badly to my remarks, she doesn't. Instead, she just gently brushes a lock of my hair behind my ear. I hear her get up and walk over to my bedroom door. When the light flickers off, I realize I should probably apologize, and so I turn back around to face her. Mom, wait! I plead from my bed, sounding as though I have something important I still want to say to her. I'm sorry, it's just that... I can't seem to find the courage to tell her that I don't believe the stories she tells me about my dad. How could I? Some of them involve things that don't exist, like wizards and magic. But instead of saying that, I think of something else to finish the sentence. Well, do do, do you ever think about leaving this island and going to see the rest of the world? I don't really want to leave the island we live on, but it was the best I could come up with. In fact, now that I think about it, though... I can't recall ever actually talking to my mom about leaving the island. I wonder what she'll say. My mom just grins back like it's something she knew I'd ask one day, but I see her gaze suddenly shift to staring at my open bedroom window. She looks back at me and simply responds, Oh, maybe one day we'll leave. One day? But I can tell she's not really thinking about a response, as if it was merely to brush the question aside. Instead, she looks back at the window like something is still bugging her. She walks over to it and then reaches outside to go and close it. Wait, Mom, please don't close it. Helps me fall asleep at night. What, the window being open? She asks. Yeah, I love falling asleep listening to all of the animal sounds. Did you know that at night there are all of these animals that come out that I can't even find during the day? The only way I know what type of animals are around here at night is by listening to them. My mom smiles back at me like she knows that she just doesn't have much say in the matter. From her perspective, it's probably better for me to be resolute to just listening to the animals instead of me trying to bring them all home as pets but I sense that something still bothers her about the window being open because she goes and peeks her head outside and looks around to see what's out there. Strange. It's never bothered her before that I sleep with the window open. Well, all right then, you win. Now go to sleep. It may be the summer, but I still have chores for you tomorrow. Okay, Mom. Good night. I love you. My mom stops for a second before leaving my room when she hears my response. Turning around, she again repeats, I love you too. I hope you know that. I wonder what's gotten into my mom tonight. She's being real sentimental. Now alone in my room, I stare up at my constellation adorned ceiling. Listening to all of the animal sounds I hear, I try to think of what animals could be making the sounds and where I'd be able to find them the next day. Normally I hear crickets, owls, and other sounds coming from nocturnal animals, but as I yawn and turn towards the window, I realize that the sounds tonight are totally different. Birds? I didn't know that birds chirp at night. Weird. I focus on the birds as I close my eyes to drift off to sleep, trying to steer my dreams towards them rather than to the other scary dreams I often have. Birds. Chapter 1. Asa M. Bishop Where am I? When I wake up, I'm lying on a cold red brick floor, staring up at an arched dome ceiling made of marble. My eyes slowly adjust, and an intricate painting on the dome above me comes into focus. In the middle stands a furious-looking man surrounded by many, if not hundreds, of animals encircled in the mist of vines. The man is dressed in a long black robe and is waving what looks like a black wand into the sky. A lightning bolt is drawn, crackling out of the wand and shooting up toward the top of the painting. All of the animals look terrified at the man's fierce demeanor. Even the crocodiles and tigers are running away. 
A chill runs through my spine when I wonder why something so terrifying is painted on the marble dome and why I awoke staring at it. This is definitely not my bedroom. The last thing I remember is my mom telling me a bedtime story beneath the soft glimmer of the constellation sky painted above my bed. But at the thought of my mom, I suddenly jump up to my feet in fear. Mom, I yell worried. Mom, are you here? If I woke up in this strange place, then maybe she's here too. I quickly look around for her, but I see that I'm all alone in the middle of a brick room about as big as my sixth grade classroom. The room has six sides, and on each of the walls is a wooden door. From where I'm standing, I make out the exit sign attached to the large door in front of me. Thank you, I say relieved to find a way out of this mysterious place. But when I run over to open the door, I can't. There's no doorknob. I try pushing on the door with everything I've got. No luck. The solid, heavy door is so large that there's no way a 12-year-old boy like myself is able to even budget an inch. I carefully examine around the door to see if there's any way to try and pry it open. Again, no luck. The door is completely sealed shut. Are you kidding me? I exclaim, patting my fist against the door. Who would seal the exit door shut? And why? Now I know I'm trapped inside of this brick room. I can't help but again to breathe hard, about to panic. If the dome painting gives any clue about what this mysterious place is, I really don't want to be here any longer than I have to. I turn around to inspect the rest of the room, hoping desperately that there's another way out. Something in the middle of the room catches my eye. Right behind where I'd woken up is a wooden stand with an open book on it. Curious, I walk over to examine it for any clue out of this place. The leather, hardbound book is as big as a large atlas, and its aged binding and worn pages immediately stand out to me. It looks at least a thousand years old and is certainly covered in enough dust to prove it. I blow off the layer of dust from the open pages, interested to see if there's anything written or drawn inside. At this very second, I jump back at the sudden sound of a loud screech coming from behind one of the doors and echoing throughout the entire hexagonal room. Did I just hear a... No, it, it couldn't have been. A gigantic bird? My hands begin shaking uncontrollably in fear. The animal sound is as terrifying as the dome painting overhead. I try to calm down, knowing that I need to focus, but I'm going to find a way home. Standing over the ancient book, I close my eyes and just breathe for a moment. I try hard to find strength by thinking of my mom, Vivian. Ever since I can remember, it's been just me and my mom. My dad, William, left us when I was just a baby. Growing up, my mom often told me that I looked just like him and that one day I'd be just as strong and as gifted as he is. I never understood why my mom spoke so lovingly about my dad. He left us, after all. She'd even tell me bedtime stories about all these crazy adventures that my dad would go on. I didn't really believe them, though. Instead, I just figured my mom was just telling me made-up stories to help me believe that growing up without a dad wasn't so bad after all. Be strong, I say to myself, thinking of the confidence my mom has in me. I'll find a way out of here. There's got to be a reason why I woke up in this mysterious place, and maybe the book has the answer. I open my eyes and look back down at the ancient book. Despite being afraid that whatever made the screeching sound could be angry I'm reading it, I quickly trace my finger down the book's open pages. It's left open to pages 74 and 75. On the left page is a long list of names that are all crossed out. The names are written in a cursive handwriting and look so old that I can barely figure out some of the letters, let alone how to pronounce most of them. But among the names are Muhammad Ibn Quazim, Owain Glinder, John Cabot, Gaspar Corte Real, and Amy Dubac de Rivery. On the right page, the crossed out names continue down toward the middle of the page. George Bass, Theodicia Burr Alston, Cochator Obivian, and Frederick MacDonald. The last name crossed out on page 75, though beautiful sounding, isn't any easier to pronounce. Emmanuel Blankisau. Below Emmanuel's name is a short list of names not crossed out. And when I read the first one, my heart stops. It's my name. Asa M. Bishop. 
Chapter 2. The Five Doors What? At least my name isn't crossed out, right? That's gotta be a good thing, I hope. And as if my middle initial on the page is really even necessary though, because I'm pretty sure that in the whole world, I'm the only Asa. My mom told me that my father wanted to name me Ace, but that she thought it sounded too much like a pilot's name. According to her, she wanted to name me Ezra, so eventually they compromised on Asa as middle ground. Not to say that Ezra would have been any better, but I wish my parents had thought about how this would affect the rest of my childhood. I can't even count how many times I've had to repeat my name to school teachers or other laughing kids. Ace, uh, I'd speak slowly, trying not to be annoyed for the hundredth time. Why is my name written in this ancient book, and why is it next on the list? Blow my name on page 75, there are just two more names left that are also not crossed out. But that's it. Nothing else is written in the book. Even all the pages are left blank except, oddly, for numbers on the bottom corners. The page numbers end at page 125, exactly 50 blank pages after the one with my name on it. I wonder if this old book has a title. I flip it shut to glance at the leather hardbound cover. Once again, I jump when the same terrifying screech comes from behind one of the doors. I quickly look at the cover, but notice there's only a circular seal and no title at all on it. Not wanting to hear the terrifying screech again, I leave the book closed and quickly back away from the wooden stand. Something behind one of these doors really doesn't want me touching this book. I must find a way out of this place, or at least an explanation for why I'm here. I frantically begin walking around the rest of the hexagonal room, searching for any possible clue. As I walk, I notice that the age of the room matches that of the book. Vines have lightly grown up the cracked red brick walls, and parts of the mural above me on the marble dome have chipped off. Each of the five remaining doors is painted a different color, and, unlike the exit door, there actually are doorknobs on each one. But most curious, in the middle of each door is nailed a wooden tile with a single confusing word etched into it. From the left of the exit door circling around, the wooden tiles on each door read terrarium, jungle, aquarium, aviary, and safari. The terrarium door is painted black, jungle door painted green, Aquarium door painted blue, aviary door painted red, and safari door painted yellow. The paint on each door is faded and chipped, matching the age of the rest of the hexagonal room. The coloring of each door makes sense to me, but the door names don't. What, am I in some type of zoo or something? This place is getting stranger and stranger. Considering the fact I just woke up under a mysterious painting and found my name inside of an ancient book, these door names are seriously starting to freak me out. My teachers at school would probably say I'm more curious than the average 6th grader. I wouldn't necessarily call it curious, but perhaps growing up listening to my mom's stories instilled in me a restless sense of adventure. So, without thinking about too much, I randomly spin in a circle and walk toward whichever door I end up facing. If I'm going to find a way out of this place, I guess I'll have to open at least one door. Here I go, I exclaim, both excited and nervous about what may be waiting for me on the other side. I open the blue door labeled Aquarium and absolutely cannot believe what I'm seeing.